Hey, what's up? How you doing? If you didn't see, I know I took a long hiatus from posting to YouTube over like a year, I think it's been, since I posted. I just started posting again. My last video I just posted was a What's in My Backpack, sort of an updated version, since it's been a while since I filmed one of those. But yes, I am now like consistently back. Um, so I'm gonna be trying to get on the normal schedule of posting. I'm trying to plan on posting more than just once a week, but we'll see how it goes. I'm at least hopefully going to be posting once a week. I'm a senior, I'm graduating in December, so I've learned quite a bit over my course of three and a half years of college. So basically I'm just gonna be sharing some general information that is very helpful, I think, to know before going into college or maybe your first year or so of college. So let's just get into it. All right, first off, come to college prepared for anything. Basically, what I mean by that is don't come in with pre-existing expectations of what your college experience is going to be like because it varies for everyone. It is different for everyone. No one has the exact same college experience as you. You can watch a million YouTube videos, you can talk to a million people who have gone to college, you can watch a million college videos or TV shows and see a million different experiences because everyone's is different. So if you go into college thinking, oh my life is going to be exactly like this movie or this YouTuber or this TV show or whatever, or my friends or my sisters or my brothers, it's not gonna be. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think you should want to have the exact same experience as somebody else. Just make college whatever you want it to be. Don't go in and try to do things based off of what other people have done. Like if your sister went to college right before you and you kind of just want to follow in her footsteps, I don't think that's a great idea because she is gonna have her own experience and what she's gonna want to do and you're gonna have your own thing and what you want to do. I think you should just seek out things that you want to do and clubs that you want to join, take classes you want to take, major in something you want to major in. Just don't get hung up on what other people are doing. Come to college ready for anything and do what you want to do. Don't uh, let somebody else control your college experience or don't let the idea of something in your mind control your college experience. Just do it. Just do what you want to do. Piggybacking off of that, do research on the organizations at your university, the clubs, the groups, all of that kind of stuff that's not specifically class related. College classes can be fun, especially if you're majoring in something that you like, but college is a whole lot more than just classes. Clubs and activities and groups are one of the best ways to have fun and make friends in college. So I highly, 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 highly recommend you join a club or group of some sort. Now I do not mean just go rush and go join Greek life or something like that because I think that's the very stereotypical thing that most people when they think join a club or an organization and college, they join Greek life. Greek life is not for everyone. A lot of people join because they think it's what they're supposed to do or they think that's what where they're gonna make the most friends and a lot of people also don't like it. So it's not a one-size-fits-all group. There's a lot of other things you can do in order to get involved in your campus without just joining Greek Life. I mean, if you want to join it, join it, but if you're just joining it because you think it's the best way to get involved, look into other stuff too. And don't just rely on Greek Life. From my personal experience, I joined um, a youth group my freshman or sophomore year and I did that for a couple years and I really enjoyed it. And I also joined my school's broadcast journalism program and that is where I have made like 80% of my friends. And doing things within that group is what I enjoy more than anything else in college. I love, love, love that organization. So just like look at your school's website, look at posters across campus, talk to people who go to that school, what they're interested in, the organizations that they've joined, talk to your advisor, talk to anybody you can talk to or Google anything you can Google to find on the school's website in order to get acquainted with the different types of clubs and organizations on your campus that you can get involved in. Okay, here's a really big one on how to survive college and not end up dropping out or hating your life. Make a class schedule that you can realistically stick to and that you will actually enjoy. Or even if you don't enjoy it, you will at least do it. If you know you're not a morning person and you know you're gonna end up skipping any class you take before 9 o'clock in the morning, don't sign up for an 8 a.m. Just don't do it. Even if your advisor pushes you to take a class and it's only at 8 a.m., if you know you're just gonna skip it, 
do not take that class. If you know it's gonna suck, but you have the willpower to take it and you have to take that class, or like it's the best thing for you to take that class, then okay, I would say take it. I've done that before. I hate 8 a.m.s, but I've done it before because it was the best thing for me class-wise. But I knew that I would have the discipline to not skip the class and to go to it. But if you know that you won't and that you're gonna be like, up really late hours of the night or you just won't wake up and go to an 8 a.m. you're like prone to skipping classes in general just don't take it take something later it's very important for you to go to your classes I know that's a very cliche thing to say and everyone's gonna say the same thing go to your classes go to your classes but it is real go to your classes <laughs> and make a schedule where you will go to your classes if you know you have a short attention span don't take a three hour long class if you know that you're not going to want to go back to campus late at night, don't take a night class. If you know you're not going to be able to do a lot of work back to back to back, don't take back to back to back classes, space them out. If you know that you're going to need breaks in between classes, then try to space your classes out. Just really think about things other than just what your advisor tells you or the classes that you need to take. Think beyond that of the actual schedule you're making because that's what you're going to be living by for the whole semester so it's really crucial that you actually make a schedule that you're going to stick to and that kind of again goes into my next point of go to your classes do your work work your hardest ultimately you are in college for the classes the other stuff is really fun too but you do need to make sure that you're putting your classwork first because you do not want to get stuck flunking out of classes and having to stay at school longer and go an extra semester. You're spending more money that way. You're putting off getting a career and your job if you keep staying in college because you're flunking. And you're more likely to just not finish if you just keep putting graduation off. So make sure you're just going to your classes and doing your work. This is something that's like super basic. Should I even mention it in this video? I don't know. I'm just saying don't lose sight of what you're in college to do, which is to get your degree. But, on the other hand of that coin, also have fun with your friends, stay at home, do whatever you want to do, have a lot of fun because college is like the last chunk of time you're going to have like this before you go into a career where you're working for the rest of your life. Isn't that a depressing fact to think about? Ooh. Yes, you need to do your work. Yes, you need to work hard. Yes, you need to get internships, have jobs, that kind of stuff. But you also need to have fun if not for fun's sake, for your mental health sake. It's really a balancing act, honestly, of social life, work life, school life. It's just something that you should really be aware of because mental health is real, but also your schoolwork is real and you need to do it. Figure out the best thing for you. If you need to have Friday nights to have fun, and make your schedule, your work schedule and your school schedule so that you can have Friday nights to have fun. If you don't need that, if you just need like a day to relax, make sure you set aside like a Sunday or a Saturday or a random school day where you don't have classes or work and you just relax that day. You need to make sure that you are having fun as well as working hard. Next, learn how to cook. Do not rely on fast food. You will get tired of it. You will start to feel like crap. You will most likely start to gain weight and you will really be missing a home cooked meal after a certain amount of time of just like fast food or dining hall food. Even if it's only a couple of meals, master a couple of meals that you really like that you can just cook by yourself. Especially if you're not living in a dorm. I know it's a little bit harder if you live in a dorm because you probably won't have a kitchen and if you do it's going to be a community kitchen. But especially if you have an apartment, learn how to cook a couple of things. Alright, and then my last thing is very, very, very important but it's something that a lot of people don't even think about when they're first starting in college or sort of in the middle. They only start to think about it at the very end and that is to set yourself up to graduate on time. Now, that sounds very basic but a lot of components go into graduating and a lot of components go into making sure that you have a job waiting for you once you graduate or that you will at least be in a good position to get a job once you graduate. Now what I mean by this is do not just take like 12 hours or the basic amount of hours so that way once you get later on your junior and senior year your advisor's like well if you want to graduate on time you need to take 18 hours for the next three semesters. That sucks. Balance yourself out better if you can to take like 15 hours every semester or take a summer class every once in a while. That kind of thing really can keep you from having to like at the crunch time at the very end couple semesters having to just jam a bunch of hours into your schedule or take a bunch of summer classes or something like that. Be thinking of graduation when you're a freshman. 
that's not something that you need to put off until you're a senior because things that you do freshman year can have consequences for you not graduating on time later on. That also includes like if you fail classes your freshman year, it can put off your graduation day too. So that's why you need to be like focused on graduation even your freshman year. Now as far as being set up to also get a good job after college, that comes with developing good relationships and getting a good work ethic and good work experience in college. That comes mostly from clubs and internships. If you have an intention of going on and getting your master's, then certain things like your GPA and good references from professors matters a lot. So you need to focus on that kind of thing. If you are not planning on going in and getting your master's, you're just planning on going straight into the workforce after college, you need to also make a connections with professors, but you need to make connections with professors more or less the ones that are in the field that you want to go into. Like if you're in journalism like me, you want to get on the good side of your journalism professors and impress them because they will probably have connections in the real world and can potentially help you get a job. It's always good to leave a good impression on all your professors, obviously, but the ones that matter more in terms of you getting a job are gonna be the ones that have connections in the real world, in the field that you wanna go into. And that's something that just comes from talking with your professors, doing really good work in class. They will notice you if you put a lot of effort into your class, if you always come and you don't skip, if you talk to them about stuff, ask them questions about assignments, and just do really good work. In general, your professor's gonna notice. And going up and talking to them after class or emailing them or Anything like that is always a good way to build a relationship with them, so that way when it comes time for you to start having references, you can go to them and ask to be a reference and they will most likely say yes, and they will also most likely help you if you ask them like where you should look for a job and where they have connections at. And as far as having good experience and something tangible that you can show employers, such as a resume or a reel if you're in like a video world like I am, then that comes from Yes, somewhat your classes, but also clubs within your field. Like again, I will use me as an example, broadcast journalism. You need a reel, like video edited together of stuff you have done, of your work that you can show employers. Because a lot of fields like that are more talent-based than academic-based. Journalists, like yes, you need a bachelor's degree in media, but you also need to be able to do the job that you're getting hired on to do, and that's just across the board. And so the best way to show employers what you can do and the best way to get hired is to have something tangible to show them. So joining something like a club, like for me, joining the broadcast news station at the school so that I have shows and work that I've done that I put have put on my reel that I can show employers and put on my website, that is super important. As well as if there's not a club at your school that you can do, or if you wanna like maximize this, also getting internships at places. Like I interned at a news station and now I have that as well to put on my resume and that kind of stuff is just invaluable. Like having something in the real world to show an employer like, hey, I have worked here then you make connections in the real world. They can be references or they might even offer you a job. That kind of thing, super, super, super important in making sure that you get a job after graduation because I know that's a lot of people's biggest fear is how am I even gonna get a job? And that's something that I think is super important to start looking at from the beginning. Like I joined our broadcast journalism club my first semester freshman year. Those kind of things really, really, really help you uh, when looking for jobs and professors, again, can be very, very valuable to you. And internships, very, very valuable to you. You don't wanna be stressing your last semester uh, thinking that you wasted your time in college because you didn't join clubs, you didn't have an internship, you didn't make good relationships with professors, and now you're about to graduate and you have no idea what you're gonna do. That is not the situation that you want to be in, so just start setting yourself up freshman year if you can uh, in order to be successful throughout the rest of college and to be successful when you graduate. Try to graduate with experience under your belt and professors that got you back. That is it. Those are my tips on how to be successful in college. Again, everyone's experience with college is different, but there are some standard things that I think everyone should be focused on that are going to make you successful. But anyway, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I have a lot of other college-related videos. If you're interested in them, they are in a playlist on my channel. You can check it out. Anyway, I hope Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.